G'day watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I am featuring a new brand. This is uh, or Oblevu. Yeah, actually, they don't tell you how to pronounce it, so tell me what you think. Uh, I'm going to go by those two alternatives. This is courtesy of James, a mate from work who also is into watches. Uh, now this is, there's a little bit of a grippiness to this box. So unfortunately, the spinability is probably only going to be a one out of five. So, you know, there's a bit of solidness, a bit of felt in the inside, finishing there, and that's the watch itself. Uh, let's just remove it from there. Um, there is a warranty card, and I think might be a little bit of manual, but you know, nobody really needs to look at that, especially you guys who know your watches. So what we have in hand here is something really quite special, something very different, at least not something I've seen before. Uh, this is the Oblevo uh, Interstellar Starship. I guess sometimes they have the word Starship in Amazon. I think they use the word Interstellar or in their official website, whatever. You know, I'm going to call it Interstellar Starship because we love our redundancies. Uh, the model number is OBL-BLM, at least on AliExpress, that is what is written. Uh, now, in terms of the actual MSRP, if that matters, is 388 USD. But this typically goes for around 250 to 280 USD. So I guess that might be the meaningful uh, price under discussion here for this particular piece. Okay, um, in terms of alternatives uh, they do have I think a whitish dial or silver dial they do have a black dial different straps uh, you know take a look at the ranges uh, if you wish to explore that online but I, I think this is actually the best looking one you know this kind of like blue uh, with otherwise naked steel in the construction elsewhere all right first up as I usually do guys let's talk about movement so in here is a modified you know substantially modified Miyota 8 series. I want to say it's the 82S0, but there's no specification uh, because it is actually a no date movement. It, that, that crown goes from zero to time adjusts. There is no date position, so it's a no date movement. Uh, let me know if you know better what exactly is in here. Uh, in terms of uh, rated accuracy, you can see what the 8 series is rated at on the left there. I haven't bothered to actually time it because to do it manually in looking at the seconds hand is actually not possible, not really, because there's you know, a triple hand there. Uh, I guess I could have put it on the time grapher, but this watch isn't you know, really designed for super precise timekeeping, so I haven't bothered to do that. Moving on then, guys. So in terms of the case, what we have here is a 41 millimeter diameter 316L steel case. Uh, in terms of thickness, Look at that domed sapphire, right? So if you take it from the absolute bottom of the case to the, the, the apical, you know, the apex of that dome, the, the peak of that dome, it's 18 millimeters. But if you remove that dome and you measured only, you know, the edge of the case here where my fingers are pointing to the bottom, that's about 11 millimeters. So that dome fully accounts for about seven millimeters of thickness. Lug width is 20 millimeters and the lug to lug distance is 49 millimeters between my thumbs there. Overall weight only 88 grams and perhaps that is actually deliberate you know Chinese and 88 who knows but it's it's a nice weight to have definitely very light and uh, I find these types of weights easy to forget uh, there's a watch on your wrist you know that type of lightness. Finishing wise okay you can see long brushing on the top surface uh, top surface of the lugs there mirror polish finishes on the sides you know there's a bit of a ridge there I guess in terms of breaking up the uh, the surface there and then circular brushing for all surfaces down the bottom you know nice and simple but pretty well done I have to say no complaints about the level of finishing for a watch under 500 maybe even under 800 dollars this is actually pretty good uh, in terms of uh, the ceiling, all right, so you have a screw down case back there, a screw down display case back, but that is only a push crown, right? That's what that is, a push crown, and it's not uh, not signed, it's a plain crown. The water rating you can see at the back there, they've put as 50 meters of five atmospheres, and that's okay, you know, this is not a 
watch that I would think I would expect to want to take underwater, it's okay that it's 50 meters, I think. Okay, moving on to what is possibly one of the big stars of the show here is this DAO. This is a multi-layered, what I want to say, hyper-modern blue DAO, right? The DAO surface itself is blue. Uh, they have that, what do you call that, a gantry, a cage. You know, that's brush in terms of its finishing. It's got the chapter ring with numerals uh, printed on there in blue. And it's got a brush and line textured dial surface, right? The blue dial surface there is, is, is quite done, you know, quite, quite nice really. You know, it's a nice choice of texture. They've gone for that. The high ends, you know, are complicated, right? So there's a three handed seconds hand. There's brush finish as is that kind of circular pointy uh, minute hand, which is, you know, around that three, so three sided seconds hand there. And then the hour is perhaps the most special of all. It's a turning carousel or ring of 12 numerals that just rotates around as you adjust the time here. And perhaps I'll just, you know, come away from the zoom in shots to show you how it adjusts. So I'm just going to pull it out and then you can see as I turn the time forward, that minute hand advances in the middle and then that hour hand or that hour carousel just rotates, you know, and that pointer down at the bottom, the H, is where you read off the time in terms of the hour, right? Very different, very special, not something I have ever seen before. All right, in terms of Loom, it's got blue super Loom Nova. That's what they say in, um, and it, it's really a beautiful Loom signature here. It's got the central six dots. It's got the hands. Uh, it's got the hour carousel. Every uh, you know numeral is loomed, and it's also got the H pointer in Loom here. Now the Looms. It, you know, the actual three dimensionality of the signature is beautiful, but it's actually very lightly applied. So this does not glow very brightly, nor does it go very long at all. Right on top of that, you know, super three dimensional dial here is another super feature, a very much a three dimensional feature and very high dome, hyper domed, uh, I want to say corneal shape. You know, the front of the eye is a cornea, and this looks like a bit of an eye almost, right? A corneal-shaped sapphire crystal. It is just gorgeous and absolutely unique. It doesn't have too much in terms of distortion, and but that's fine. You know, just, just the, you know, the surface, the contour has so much character here. That itself is a bit of a talking point. Never seen a crystal like this. Okay, away from the, that amazing case, so the, the strap, I guess, you know, rightly so, it doesn't steal any of the attention. It's just a very simple, you know, a bit of weave woven pattern here, textured silicon rubber. It's got two keepers here and it's got brushed hardware. That's all I'm going to say about the strap. It's absolutely functional, perfectly suited to this watch and at least cut to absolutely integrate with, you know, the case over here, how it fits in here. Okay, so that's the entire description. I'm going to put it on the wrist for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there you have it, the Avovo Interstellar Starship on my 17 centimeter wrist. So remember, it's 41 millimeters, 49 millimeter lug to lug. Uh, quite thick, you know, really one of the thickest watches you'll see, short of a, I guess, a G Shock. Uh, you know, this is because of that super three dimensional. Uh, dial with that dome there, so 18 millimeters off the wrist. But because it's actually quite, you know, modest in size, it carries pretty well. No problem carrying this whatsoever. And that's how that strap looks. Okay, so that's the entire description and wrist shot of the watch. What are the pros? What have I really enjoyed about this? You know, so much to enjoy, really. One of the most fascinating designs and also very original design that I have seen. You know, I've, I've done a quick search. I can't find anything that is really like this, but if you are aware of somebody else that has come up with this design and they've in fact copied it, let me know. I couldn't find anything. Uh, so kudos to them as far as I know for uh, something very original and fascinating. Great talking piece. Of course, anybody who looks at this who is half interested in watches will be asking what the heck is that? And you can start a nice conversation. I think the, the features are well done, right? So the, the choice of the rotating carousel, it's very interesting the way they're done, the seconds and the minute hands, different, you know, also unconventional, which is good. 
you know, that floating gantry or cage, you know, above that carousel there, whatever you call it. You know, again, all these little implementations really quite nicely done and excellent crafting as well. You know, the case design, the, the finishing is excellent. You know, for this price, you, you won't find better, you know, really. It's really quite done nicely and the way it sits on the wrist as well, the way the lugs curve down and as well as the strap they've chosen, no complaints whatsoever. Sits very nicely and just that, you know, I've said this is simply gorgeous dome crystal there, unique and like nothing else. Any weaknesses? Well, you know, just like other brands like Auto8 and Atawak, whom I've reviewed, you know, it's not a watch to quickly tell the time, you know, at a glance, but rather to look at and savor. That's that's absolutely fine. You know, this is what this is for. If you want a watch to, you know, that, that tells you a time at a glance, this is not the watch you're going to choose. You're going to choose a conventional three-hander high contrast, right? Uh, if you want to savor a watch, this might be a good choice. The, the loom positioning, I think, is very interesting. You know, it's got a very, uh, you know, three-dimensional character to it. But, you know, as I said, very, very poorly applied, very poor lifespan, doesn't grow very long at all. And that, that's, you know, a little bit of a, a, you know, black mark against this watch. And apart from that, I would say two other very huge letdowns. I would, you know, the hour ring, unfortunately, has come loose. So if you look at the hour here, it's pointing at about two. I'm just going to shake it roughly, you know, just very gently, not roughly, I'm oh, sorry. You know, it's changed to three and then if I just give it a slight shake and you can see the time will actually rotate. All right, so that's gone to five now and there you go. It's just going to kind of, you know, it, it's loose basically, you know, enough of demonstrating that. Uh, to you guys and unfortunately you know that is a weakness uh, no local repairer will you know easily know how to handle this and James is going to have to return it and you know ask for a refund or replacement and that's because it's come loose you can see up the top here hopefully I'm not sure if it's going to show up that there's actually some scratches on the dial like say where the 12 o'clock is underneath there the dial has been scratched and you can see the the blue color has come off slightly there. So there's one no, one big letdown. There's a mechanical failure here. Uh, the other thing is that the company absolutely ignored any requests for collaboration. Uh, when James reached out to them, they just said, no, no thanks. When I reached out to them, I didn't even get a reply. So shame on you. You know, you should at least try to reply to people if you want to make business. That's my opinion. But, you know, maybe some companies have a different modus operandi these days. Okay. So there you go, guys. That's my review and thoughts about this very fascinating timepiece, but not without its weaknesses and unfortunate mechanical failure here. Let me know what you think. And I would like to know, especially if you have bought any pieces from this company, your experiences would love to hear from you guys. So thank you again for sticking with me. I'll see you guys next time. <music>